So the peer mentors, it's a pleasure to welcome them here tonight. They're a group of upperclassmen you'll be working with in the fall. And um, they're here to help you get settled into college life and find your footing at UVM. And their specialty is um, wisdom and guidance from a student perspective. Uh, they can answer most of the questions you may have tonight about UVM, honors college, and life as a student. We're gonna get through as many questions as we can. Uh, we may not get through all of them. And if we don't, um, we'll have ways for you to follow up at the end of this session. Um, so I'm now gonna turn it over to our peer mentors and I'll ask them to introduce themselves. Um, Megan, if you'll go ahead and uh, introduce yourself first. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Megan Richardson. Um, I'm currently a sophomore and I'm studying political science in College of Arts and Sciences and I use she, her pronouns and I am from Rochester, New York. Hi everyone, I'm Ben. Uh, I'm from Massachusetts. I use he, him pronouns and I'm a biochemistry major here at UVM. Hi everyone, I'm Maddie Miller. I'm from Arlington, Virginia. I use she, her pronouns and I'm studying art education in the College of Education and Social Services. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Taylor. I'm from Norwich, Vermont. I study chemistry in the College of Arts and Sciences and I use he, him pronouns. Okay. All right. All right. Um, folks, I was wondering if you could maybe start us off. Um, tell your own story. Uh, how is it that you chose to come to the University of Vermont? Um, so I applied to UVM originally um, looking to be a bio major, but then my senior year of high school, I took AP Gov and I kind of fell in love with the discipline of political science. And um, so as I was like looking through the colleges that I had applied to, um, I was really drawn by UVM's political science department. And um, when I was visiting for admitted students day, which I wish you all could um, experience, but we're gonna try to make it as close as possible. I just um, found myself in the honors college talking to some faculty and um, other students and just the environment at UVM is so welcoming and just kind and open. And I really, really appreciated that about campus and everybody I met there. And that's why I ultimately chose to come here. Um, I'm pre-med, so uh, I was looking for a university that had close connections to a medical school or hospital, which UVM has. Um, and so that was a really attractive aspect of UVM for me. And then uh, when I came to my admitted students day, I fell in love with the community and the, uh, the people here uh, were, were there are really, really amazing, super collaborative and extremely supportive. Uh, I came to UVM after attending an admitted students day too. I was very undecided on where I wanted to go to school. And when I went up to Vermont, just the mountains and the air and the energy on campus was so kind and welcoming. And I hope we can express some of that here over Zoom for you guys. But yeah, I think it's a really special place and it's got really great vibes. I was very undecided um, coming into college about what I wanted to do. And so I knew that I wanted a college where I could focus on a number of things and then sort of test the waters and see what I liked and see what I didn't like and then be able to specialize in that. And so UVM, I was really interested to in, in the liberal arts model of the College of Arts and Sciences, wherein you know there's a lot of majors that you can choose from, and then a lot of specificity among professors in those majors. But um, I really found that the community on campus um, supported my desires to learn new things and try out new uh, experiences instead of some other schools that I were looking at that I was looking at that were specializing in science or specializing in art and so on. Okay, great. Thank you all. Okay, folks, uh, if you have questions for the peer mentors, um, you can go ahead again, you can type them into the uh, chat function that we have for the Zoom meeting, or you can also just type hand and then I'm happy to unmute you so that you can uh, ask your question live and in person as it were. We do have a handful of questions that folks sent in, in advance. And so um, going through a few of those, I was wondering if you all could talk about um, if you lived in the Honors College Residential Hall in your first year on campus and what was that experience like? Um, I didn't live in the um, Honors College first year, so I will pass. 
Um, I did live in the Honors College my first year. I thought it was an absolutely amazing experience. Um, the facilities were wonderful. Uh, the building has air conditioning, which doesn't seem like it's that important in Vermont, but it was really nice. Um, beyond that, uh, having a private bathroom is a huge plus. Uh, and it's one of, I think it's the, one of the only two, one of two buildings on campus that has private bathrooms. Um, so that's pretty amazing. And then the people you live with, again, are super collaborative. So, you know, if you don't totally understand something that's happening in one of your classes, there's probably someone in your hall who can help you with it. And I found that to be one of the best parts about living there. I also didn't live in the Honors College dorm the first year. I was at UVM, but I will say that every time I walked into the building, it was a very welcoming space. So gotta love it there. I similarly, uh, unfortunately, have to pass. I lived in U Heights South, um, which is across the way from the Honors College um, in my first year. Okay. Um, another question that we have that folks uh, sent in in advance is, what is the coursework in the Honors College like? Um, and do you feel like it's challenged you at your, in, during your time at UVM? So the coursework um, for your H-12 classes, it'll kind of depend on what your major is or what most of your classes are like um, in comparison to how hard it is and how much like extra effort you have to put in for readings and writings. Um, because it is a lot of reading and writing and philosophy and discussion-based learning, which I really, really loved. Um, and I've really enjoyed all of the classes I've taken um, through HCAL. Um, and, but it's definitely difficult. It's a lot of work, um, but it's nothing that like, you wouldn't be able to handle, especially like, um, just like getting into the Honors College. And um, but yeah, all the professors are amazing. And they take the time to get to know you. So if you do struggle with the coursework or with some of like the philosophical ideas that we talk about first semester, that like for me were brand new before I came to UVM, um, it's they'll work with you and they will help you. And um, there's like never a point where I've ever felt like I was gonna get like left behind or fall through the cracks. Um, from like the administration and from all the professors because you'll definitely have support from your peer mentors and also um, your community. I definitely have to second everything that Megan just mentioned. Um, I'd also like to point out that after your, uh, is it your first, your first semester, you get to pick your honors college course. And so you can start to sort of shape the seminars that you take around uh, either your major or your general education requirements. So you do have a lot of leeway in how you choose to pursue your honors college um, requirements and education. I really have enjoyed my honors college classes. I feel like they've been some of the more engaging and challenging classes I've taken at UVM and especially coming into UVM in my first semester, taking the um, first class H call 85 was really cool because I felt like it connected material from a lot of my other classes and it was a whole new way of looking at all of my education and seeing how everything was working together. I would say for me, um, my honors college classes have been some of the best in my college career. Um, so as a chemistry major, I'm in a lot of structured um, curriculum, which means that I don't have a lot of freedom to take classes that necessary would like to take inside of chemistry. And so the honors college courses have challenged me to think, first of all, beyond chemistry, sort of thinking differently, but they've also challenged me to think creatively about how I would like to use chemistry. Um, and I found that a lot of the honors college classes, while they may be on the topic of philosophy or covering philosophy or other sort of engaged academic pursuits, um, a lot of them have applications to other fields of academia and other fields of the world. Um, and I think it's really cool because those courses allow you to think beyond just the confines of what we're learning in a book and perhaps consider how to apply it to other parts of our lives. Got it. Um, and as a quick follow-up question, since you've all uh, done first year curriculum, you've done sophomore seminars, of the courses you've taken, uh, who's been your favorite faculty member or which has been your favorite honors college course and why? Um, so for my favorite honors college faculty member, um, they're all incredible. 
And my first semester, first year professor was Jennifer Pru, and she was incredible. She like wasn't anything like how I thought a college professor would be. And she was tough on us and she expected us to work hard and to get everything done, but she was so kind and nurturing at the same time. It just like really helped me in my transition into college to have such like a like positive figure um, that I would get to see like in person and in a like pretty small class um, a couple times every week. And then my favorite class that I've taken um, was my first semester sophomore seminar with um, Kelly Clark Keefe, and it was called Body, Earth, and Identity. And um, it was just like different than any other class I'd ever taken. And it was a very like mindful um, hour and 15 minutes that I would get to spend with the class as we like explored how um, our bodies are shaped by like who we are and where we come from, which I really enjoyed. Uh, my favorite course uh, was a course on virology and how viruses are actually quite beneficial. Uh, not necessarily uh, COVID, but the, uh, the other ones out there. Um, and uh, the professor who taught that course, Marcus Tolley, um, inspired me um, to pursue virology as my topic of research. And I'm now working in his lab and I'll be starting this summer. Um, my favorite H call course that I've taken was my um, spring semester first year class. It was called Gender and Ways of Knowing with Leisha Snell, and it was uh, incredible. She is a amazing professor and she cares so much about her students. And one of the things that I really value about um, that class is I've been able to maintain a connection with Lisa and still talk to her um, even two semesters after, and I hope to continue doing so in the future. Otherwise, I've had a lot of good classes outside of Honors College as well. Um, this past fall, I took uh, Intro to Environmental Studies with Amy Seidel, which was absolutely incredible and changed a lot of my perspectives and made me a lot more aware of how we are in our environment. And my first semester of my freshman year, I took Human Development with um, Three different professors actually but that was also really cool and it really made me um, evaluate how we live our lives and how we connect to each other so that was super interesting. Uh, my favorite class in the honors college was about animal products and human health with Yana Kraft um, who's in the animal sciences program and what I really appreciated about this class was the structure um, was through a, a few papers, but then a large number of debates. And so I had a debate partner that I was assigned in the class, and then I had to debate against other classmates on topics such as if it's ethical to eat meat or are eggs good or bad for you. Um, and so in the process of this class, I first of all learned how to do research by digging into academic literature, but then I also learned how to form ideas that were not necessarily congruent with the way that I was thinking. Um, and so I had to form arguments that, for example, argued um, against eating meat or for eating meat, um, even though they might have sort of been against what I was thinking or believing at the time. And what I appreciated most about the class was that uh, Professor Kraft, or as we call her, Yana, um, really believed more in myself and me and the rest of us than we did um, to begin with. And her belief in all of us um, allowed us to create some incredible debate in this class. And I formed relationships from that class um, with my fellow classmates that last to this day. And we check in with each other, um, this is now two years later, sometimes about um, the debates we had and how they've changed our lives. Um, so for example, for me, that class inspired me to stop eating meat um, and, and has had a profound impact on the way that I think about my role in the, in the planet. Great, thank you all. With Honors College Seminars, we do draw faculty from all of the undergraduate colleges at UVM plus the College of Medicine. So it's, it is a very diverse group of, of folks that you have a chance to work with. Um, if you do have questions, uh, do feel free to type your questions into the chat function in our Zoom meeting or even just type in hand and then I can call on you to go ahead and ask your question in person, if you will. Um, we do have a bunch of questions sent in in advance um, from folks and so I'll keep working through those and probably change gears a little bit now um, to hear more about uh, your academic journey. So coming into UVM, um, did you know what it is you wanted to study? Um, and if so, um, how did you settle into that course of study? 
conversely, if you did not know what it is you wanted to study coming into UVM, how is it that you found um, your academic fit? Um, so I came into UVM as a political science major, and during my first year, I was enrolled in like a first year interest course um, or an interest group that was called the Integrated Social Science Program. And through that, I took um, basically just a bunch of different humanities classes throughout my first year, in addition to my honors college classes. And that um, made me just fall in love with sociology. And now I am actually minoring in sociology and I'm thinking about pulling it up as a double major. And um, so being at UVM has really opened my eyes to things that I never really thought about before. And now I've also added the statistics minor after I promised myself I would never take another math class ever again because um, I took a statistics class on social justice and it just blew my mind and I absolutely loved my professor and just class was really, really engaging and I hadn't realized how much I loved math. Um, for me, I actually applied to UVM as a biology major. Um, when I went to my admitted students day visit, I met the head of the biochemistry department who um, really opened my eyes to the different parts of biology there are and I found that um, focusing on biochemistry was really uh, more relevant to what I was interested in, where I wanted to go with my life, and um, so I, I made the switch. Um, I've also added on a uh, pharmacology minor that I'm pursuing that uh, lines up pretty nicely with my uh, pre-med aspirations as well as um, uh, my biochemistry major uh, and I am considering uh, pursuing the accelerated master's program at UVM where I will be able to complete both my uh, bachelor's and a master's degree in pharmacology uh, in a total of five years. I came into UVM um, as an art education major and I think something that really cemented that for me was the different opportunities I've had to work with um, that field in both the UVM community and the greater Burlington community. Um, I've been able to make a lot of connections both on campus and off to different programs that get, get that, that gets art out into people's lives. And I think that's really helped me see that this is what I wanna do and feel comfortable with that. So as I mentioned before, I came to UVM uh, not knowing what I wanted to do. Um, and so when I first arrived, I was an environmental science major in the Rubenstein School. Um, and I quickly found out that I really enjoyed the classwork, um, but I was not necessarily uh, in love with some of the career prospects um, after being an environmental science major, at least from what I could observe um, from the students. And so then I went and switched into film, and then I went to biochemistry, and then I spent a little bit of time in math, and then I ended up in chemistry itself. Um, and so in my entire journey, um, I really think about um, my desire to find something that was really interesting to me, but then also gave me the opportunity to branch out in the future. And so I landed on chemistry because it is sort of at the center of a lot of science. And from chemistry, I can then go off and, for example, pursue a career in medicine, or I could potentially go pursue a career in research, or I could go into writing, or I could go into film. Um, and so... I guess for me, my journey has always been about thinking about becoming a better thinker, becoming a better student, becoming a better learner, um, and using my academic experiences to do all that so that then I can go and do whatever I want after I graduate. Okay, great. Uh, we've got a, a, a few questions coming in from the audience. Actually, um, folks who are all thinking very similar things, one from Justine, one from Loy, and very similar questions. Um, if you and looking for some wisdom from you all, if you are unsure what your major is, what do you think? Is it better to come into college um, undecided, or is it better to start in a major that you think you're interested in and then perhaps switch later? Um, I think this one is definitely um, just kind of up to the individual and how um, you feel about. Um, being undeclared as a major um, because at UVM it's like there's no stigma at all around not having a declared major. Um, most of my friends still don't have declared majors and we're like heading up on the end of our sophomore year 
Um, but if there is something that you think you might be interested in, I would suggest um, declaring it if you feel like it, but also it won't impact the classes you get to take, um, which are the most important thing that I've found about um, finding majors that you want and minors that you're interested in. Um, so I think it's really okay to be undeclared and to just take classes that look really interesting to you and that you feel passionate about. And when you find those classes that you do feel passionate about, you'll know um, what the right choice is for you. I'd like to second, you know, it's definitely totally fine to come in undeclared. Uh, it can be a really fun experience to explore all the different areas of academia. Um, I would say that if you are considering a select few more structured majors, that in your first year, um, you should probably focus on taking the uh, introductory courses for those majors um, as you're determining which major you're going to pursue, just so you aren't uh, behind once you settle on one. I think that's really insightful. I think, uh, yeah, if you're going to go into a structured major, then it might be helpful to take some classes, but I've had friends who have come into UVM both with majors declared and without, and they've had a lot of opportunities to explore different classes and different interests. Um, and I, yeah, I think coming into school with an undeclared major is really cool because then you have all of these different opportunities ahead of you um, to check out different classes, different paths you're interested in, and you can connect with a lot of different people. Um, to try to find out what you're interested in and what you like to do. I, I forth all of those comments um, and would also say that um, something that my advisor told me my first year was that my major didn't define my academic experience at UVM. And I think that's really important and really true. Um, so yes, I major in chemistry, but I also really like, really like film and so I take film classes. And I also am really curious about environmentalism and environmental thought, so I take those classes. And I'm not necessarily, you know, earning a minor or achieving a second major in those classes, but they're interesting to me and so I do them. Um, and I think that as you begin to think about your college career, you should really um, consider the classes and the topics that make you curious. And then you'll be able to build a structure around that in the future. Um, and I switched into chemistry the um, second semester of my sophomore year, which is a, a, a highly structured major. Um, and I did have to do a bunch of catch up. Um, but it was possible and I was able to, to move forward and now I'm, I'm ahead of schedule um, as, a, as a graduating senior. So um, it's totally possible if you decide you want to move into a structured major, even kind of late in the game. Okay, thank you all. Question coming in from Kavi is about if you have many different academic interests, does the Honors College let you explore different classes or do you have to stick on the path of your um, original major? Uh, I think you know, we, that we've talked a little bit about exploring different majors and being undeclared. I was wondering if y'all could actually talk a little bit about um, Honors College advising and some of the support in the college for figuring out your own academic path. Um, yeah, so my advisor, and I think, um, will Marfa be the advisor for incoming first years? Okay. Yes. So my class's advisor in the Honors College is Martha, and she is incredible. There's no one in the world like Martha. She has been just like a constant source of support to everybody in Honors College, and she is very knowledgeable about different professors and where they've like done research like all around the world. And I remember I went in to talk to her like my second week of school, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was like, I'm not sure. I think I'd like to study abroad. Um, and Africa seems cool. And she's like, oh, well, there's a professor who does political science research in Africa. Let me send an email to him with your contact information. And we emailed back and forth um, for a long time about it. And it was really interesting to hear about um, what he knew and how Martha was just able to connect us and really expand um, the opportunities that I've um, even seen for myself uh, here at UVM. And also um, for Honors College classes, they are in all of the different disciplines. So you can take a class that has absolutely nothing to do with your major and it'll still probably um, fulfill a requirement um, in like literacy or um, humanities too, which, you, which is pretty cool. I agree with all that. I mean, Martha's an absolutely amazing advisor. Um, 
She's my favorite advisor. She has an amazing, amazing uh, network of different connections that she uh, helps you to tap into um, and is there for you no matter what your issue is. And if you uh, need to get in touch with a tutor and don't know how to, she can help you out with that. If you need to find a research lab, she can help you. Um, if you're not sure what class to take, she's got advice. She pretty much does everything and it's amazing. I'm also here to sing the praises of Martha. She is absolutely amazing. Um, she has done a lot for me, especially when I've gotten really stressed out about my schoolwork and about my um, plan moving forward with my academics. Uh, she's been able to put me in contact with my thesis advisor, and we've had a lot of meetings trying to plan out my schedule. She is um, so helpful and so knowledgeable, and if I have questions about anything, I know that she's 100% there for me and for anyone who needs help. So. Um, I've really benefited from the Office of Undergraduate Research and Fellowships. Um, and this is an office that's available, I think, in effect for almost all students at UVM, but there's a bunch of extra resources available to Honors College students, and their office is actually in the Honors College. Um, and what's cool about FOUR, which is the acronym for the office, um, is that they can help you find opportunities, but they can also help you design applications or um, you know, interviews or different methods to get into an opportunity. Um, so FOUR has connected me with a number of um, national fellowships as well as a number of research opportunities. Um, and it's sort of been a, a catalyst for a, a, a large thrust of um, my journey outside of the classroom. Um, and so when I really think about the Honors College, I think about the classwork and then I think about the advising. And the FOUR advising that I've received has sort of been this turbocharge into my, my academic experience and helped set me up to do things past UVM and beyond UVM that are related to things that I'm interested in. Okay, great. Thank you all. Um, let's uh, switch gears a little bit and get uh, out of the residence hall, out of the classroom, um, and talk more about uh, life on campus. One question we have that was sent in in advance is, um, what is campus transportation like? Is it easy to get down to Burlington? Definitely. Um, UVM is just kind of like right above Burlington and you can see the Adirondack Mountains from campus and the sunsets are the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my entire life. And um, transportation to get down to Burlington is super easy. Um, with your CAT card, which is your student ID, you get free rides on all of the Burlington City Transit and um, anywhere else where you would have to pay. T typically, you just swipe your CAT card and buses run like every 15 or 20 minutes that can bring you straight down to the waterfront and it's also not a bad walk at all um it's pretty nice and if you ever need to clear your head i know what i do is i walk to the water and i sit on a bench um until i'm ready to go back to campus and dive back into schoolwork. but um yeah campus life is very very nice and also on campus transportation is super awesome too they even have like a late night cat bus that um, can pick you up and bring you to your uh, residence halls at like in the middle of the night on weekends. Uh, on top of on campus and uh, city transit, there's also um, buses uh, organized by the snowboard and ski club that takes students to local mountains. I think it's every every weekend that the uh, yeah, ski season is going on. So that's a, definitely a fun opportunity if you. Uh, are the type of person who wants to go skiing, whether you're learning or amazing at it already. Uh, I'd also like to add that there is a bike share operation on campus, so you can check out bikes and ride them around. And we have a lot of, we've got a bike co-op too, so we can help people get bikes and fix them up, which is great. But I'm also uh, re a really big fan of walking around. I love being able to walk down to the waterfront or walk up to the mall. And the bus system that Megan was talking about is super easy to navigate, super helpful. And there are a lot of different apps that UVM and Burlington has that you can download so you can coordinate all of your rides and transportation. That makes it really easy to get around. I second the um, enjoyment of walking. Um, I'm also a big runner, and so I spend a lot of time um, in Burlington running around not only the, the city proper, but also beyond the city. Um, so there are a lot of great trails that go 
um, you know, from, from the downtown area of Burlington up towards Winooski or down south towards South Burlington and other areas. Um, and what I think is really cool about Burlington is that you're really close to a reasonably sized city that has cafes and shops and other things, but then you're also really close to the woods. And so um, a lot of the times during the academic year, I'll start my day down at a cafe in downtown Burlington, then I'll go up to campus to go to class, and then after class I'll go into Centennial Woods, which is this large tract of forest that sits right next to, the, next to campus. And so I think being able to go from the woods to a cafe to class um, in the span of two or three hours is, is pretty incredible. Great. All right. So this question coming in from Sarah. Sarah says, I'm coming from Colorado. Oh, Sarah, I'm from Colorado too. That's great. Uh, but Sarah's question is, how do you all make it through the tough winters? Um, vitamin D supplements and spending time with your friends, um, I think, have been two huge factors that helped me through the winters. Because um, I'm from upstate New York, so uh, I'm used to the snow and the cold, but I'm not used to the wind or the kind of darkness between November and late January, early February. Um, but it's definitely manageable. It's not terrible as long as you've got a good coat um, and wear a hat to class and gloves. Um, but yeah, just making sure that you stay on top of your mental health during the winter months and all months is just um, super important. And there's a ton of resources on campus. Um, that allow you to do that. And one of my favorite ones is um, every Friday they bring in therapy dogs to the student center. And so you can just sit down and pet a dog for an hour and it's really wonderful. I would definitely have to second the um, stress on mental health, making sure that you are able to get out and do your own thing for a little bit and get away from the desk is definitely important. Um, as far as the snow and the cold goes, I actually really enjoy it. Um, I'm from a part of Massachusetts that gets rain when everyone else gets snow. So I feel like I've finally lived in the dream. I don't have to deal with the muddy backyard and the uh, annoying walk to and from the car in the case of at school uh, to and from classes. So uh, winters, Although they're they're cold and you'll want a nice jacket, they're not as quite as bad as you might think. I'm from Virginia, so my schools have gotten canceled for um, frost on the ground before. But I think that investing in a good jacket is definitely the right move. Um, I think something that's really helped me during the winter months is actually being able to get outside, even though it's cold, getting to feel the air and getting to walk around with friends, I think is really helpful for me to like maintain my mental health and just be able to see the sky, enjoy the sunrises and sunsets and appreciate the environment and the beauty around me. I second getting outside with friends. Um, when I came to UVM, I made a commitment to myself that I would make sure I got outside during the winter at least five days a week, whether that meant running or going on long walks or going skiing. Um, and so far I've been successful in all of that. Um, but a lot of friends have been uh, important in holding me accountable to that goal. Um, so there's a bunch of friends that I go skiing with on most Thursday nights at Bolton Valley, which is a ski area that's close um, to UVM. Um, and then other times I'll go running with friends in the woods um, or go uh, skating on the lake if the lake's open. Um, so I think if you build structure into your winter, um, you'll be able to not only make it through, but actually come to appreciate and enjoy um, that time of year. Okay. Well, so building off of that, where, um, coming into UEM, coming into the Honors College, where did you all, where did you find your people? How did you make your friends um, build your community at UVM? Was it in the Honors College? Was it through other associations? Um, tell us your story. Um, I built my Honors College community uh, really through my first semester freshman year class. Um, it was a really, really great group of people, and um, I'm still in contact with most of them, and I'm excited to go to RA training with one of my friends that I met like the summer before um, college started, and I found out that he and I are going to be RAs together, which will be really exciting. Um, and then a lot of my friends I've also met through um, living in l, &L which is um, the dorm pretty much right next to the Honors College on the other side um, from U Heights South. And uh, the friends I made from 
uh, my living communities have been some of the best friends um, I've had ever. And so wherever you end up um, living on campus, you are going to be surrounded by really, really awesome people. And um, they're gonna like make your college experience. Uh, my floor in University Heights North was uh, ended up being a super, super close uh, friend group. We hung out all the time, had movie nights, had game nights. Uh, it was really fun uh, in time for us, but uh, my friend group definitely wasn't limited to the people who I lived with. Uh, there are opportunities to develop social groups within your majors, within your extracurricular activities. Um, so if you don't get along with the people on your floor, that is not the end of any hope of having a social life. Uh, there's definitely plenty of other opportunities outside of your dorm. I also was able to make a lot of friends uh, in my dorm. I lived in the wellness environment in Central Campus on my first year, and my floor was also pretty active and we all became very close. Um, but this last year, we everyone moved to different buildings. And so I moved to a different building and um, I was able to make a new friend group with people who were on the other side of the building entirely, which is kind of fun. So it doesn't always have to be your floor, but there are a lot of amazing people at UVM and you can find great people who are a lot of fun to hang out with anywhere. Um, I've also been able to make friends through my different classes and different extracurricular activities as well. Clubs are a really great opportunity to meet people with similar interests who are in different majors and you can make connections all over campus. Um, so I was really lucky to have a great RA uh, my first year and our RA brought together my entire floor um, in a really meaningful way. And um, we were each sort of challenged to have a contribution to the floor. And so my contribution was making sourdough bread for the floor. Um, and I did this about every week or every other week. Um, so in New Heights North and in New Heights South, there are kitchens that the community can use. Um, and so I was really inspired by the way my RA handled this situation to get us all to become really great friends um, and ended up becoming an RA myself for two and a half years um, thereafter, um, aspiring to do the same thing. Um, and so not only did I make lots of friends my first year um, on my floor, but then as being an RA um, on many, many staffs, um, I've created probably about 100 very, very close friends um, from my RA experiences, um, which has been really special. Thank you. And uh, this question coming up from Loy, how'd you get your roommate? Do you come into UVM and you get a random roommate or did you choose your first year roommate? And how did that turn out? Um, yeah, you can either choose your roommate before you move in or um, you'll get assigned randomly to one. I um, met my first year roommate on Facebook, on the Facebook group, and we started talking um, and we really hit it off and we got along well. We were, um, we were good roommates for each other. Um, I ended up not living with her my sophomore year um, and uh, we were in different buildings because she moved into U Heights North and I stayed in L&L. &L. Um, but most of, a lot of my friends have found like their very best friends through random roommates. Um, and I know there's like, a lot of horror stories out there, but there's also a lot of really, really um, great friendships that can come from just having a random roommate assignment. Uh, my first year, I went random for roommates. Uh, me and my roommate, we got along pretty well. Uh, we weren't the best of friends and we uh, don't hang out a ton right now, but my current roommate, who is also a random selection, uh, has an amazing, amazing guy and we hang out a ton. We're really good friends and we're actually getting an apartment together uh, this summer. So that worked out well for me. I actually met my roommate at orientation. We got paired together randomly to room then and we hit it off a lot. And so we decided to room together for the first year. Um, that worked out really well. We, we became really close friends and decided to live together um, in the second year, too. And we're not living together anymore because I got mid-year hired to be an RA, and so I had to move out of that room. But um, we still keep in touch. I actually was calling her earlier today. So you can meet a lot of great people. I was in a sweet sort of uh, situation my first year, and so I had two roommates. 
Um, and I ended up getting along really well with one of the roommates and then not so well with the other roommate. Um, but we were all able to live together cohesively in our room and get done what we needed to get done um, to be productive with our schoolwork and, and so on. Um, and I think it really taught me about um, the relationship that I have with a roommate is different than the relationship that I have with some of my friends that I would either make in classes or in other parts of my university life. Um, and so however you form a relationship with your roommate, um, you'll be able to navigate that and form either boundaries or not boundaries, depending on um, what you want out of that relationship, but also what you need to live productively in your, in your room. Great, and then um, one last question, we'll make this the last one from uh, Kavi. Where do students live during junior and senior year? Um, so for junior and senior year, you can either live um, off campus um, in downtown Burlington, or um, you can stay on campus. And then there's also like kind of like half on campus, half off campus um, Redstone apartments and lofts. Um, which are on athletic campus, but they aren't um, like technically dorm buildings. Yeah, uh, I don't really have much else to add to that. You typically juniors and seniors do move off campus, but um, it, I have a sweet mate this year who is or is a junior, and uh, he was in the dorms. So it's definitely it definitely does. Happen. You do see juniors in the dorms. Those two have covered a lot of it, I think. Um, another thing is that a lot of people decide to go um, study abroad in their junior senior year. And so people will either stay on campus or find subletting opportunities off campus and take one semester abroad and have one semester back in Burlington. I'm going to pass because I think um, it was pretty well covered. Great, that sounds good. Well, um, to wrap things up tonight, I was wondering if all our panelists, if you could just go around real quick and share um, one final thing, maybe your favorite thing about UVM or your favorite thing about Burlington or your, your favorite thing about college in general that you haven't had a chance to um, talk about yet, but that you feel um, this crowd should know about. Um, so I think my favorite thing about college has been having um, the freedom and the environment where I felt safe to grow and um, kind of like explore who I am as a person. And UVM has definitely played a huge part in that um, because just the campus environment and all of the people I've met um, have really just made um, these two years amazing. And I'm like super excited for the next two years too. And um, yeah, if anyone wants to like contact any of us after that, we can also give you our contact information. I'd have to say my favorite part of college is definitely the independence that it lends you. Um, you're able to uh, pursue pretty much whatever you want, um, make the friends you want, uh, leave behind who you want. Uh, it's, uh, it's a nice clean slate to start off um, on a great road to your future. I think for me, one of the biggest things that's been great about coming to college is being able to grow more confident in my abilities to um, handle things myself. Like I've learned a lot about how to live on my own and how to trust myself and trust my instincts. Um, and also be able to reach out to people and ask for help when I need it and trust in the people around me and the environment around me. I like to think of college as um, one of the most profound times of my life, um, principally because uh, fundamentally housing is there, food is there, and generally you're pretty safe. And so beyond those sort of basic constraints or basic processes, um, I can try on different versions of myself as many times as I want um, with very low risk. And so I have, I think, probably tried out five or 10 different versions of who I think I am based on my values and um, what matters to me. Um, college has also been the time where I came out. Um, it was a time where I changed the type of people that I like to hang out with. It was a time where I um, experimented with, you know, thinking about or considering myself as a scientist or thinking about myself as a designer or a storyteller. Um, and so college is a really fun place because you can try as many different versions of yourself on as possible or as you want. Um, and people are not going to judge you or really care for that matter because they're busy doing the same thing themselves. 
Okay, well, Megan, Ben, Maddie, Alex, thank you all very much for your time tonight, for your thoughts and your wisdom.